everyone. Thank you for joining KTC or Grung Thai Card session. Today, my name is Apisma Nasongkra, along with Kun Chutide Chayuti. We will talk to you about the performance of the first quarter. However, some of you might not familiar with KTC, so we're going to talk about the history of the company a little bit. We are incorporated in 1996 as a credit card unit in um, Kung Thai Bank. At that time, Kung Thai Bank hold us 100%. And in the year 2002, Kung Thai Bank decided to privatize KTC. We listed in the stock exchange in October 2002, and KTB diluted their share from 100% to 49.5, and they hold us 49.5 since 2002. There are a lot of individual names in the shareholder structure, but they are not related to KTB or KTC. They are silent shareholders. We have eight members of the board, and KTB sent three of the representatives to sit in the board of directors. And for the business we have, we have two key business, credit card and personal loan. Credit card is the majority of 65% of total receivables, and personal loan is about 35%. But personal loan generate higher yield than credit card. It generates around 40% of the total revenue, and credit card is about 60%. There are different rules and regulations in order to do both business. And we need to apply license from the BOT, and BOT set all the rules. For credit card, minimum income is 15,000 baht a month to be eligible to apply for credit card business. Interest rate maximum at 18%. Every player in Thailand charging at 18%. So there are no price war in terms of the credit card business. For the credit line, it depends on customer income. If the income between 15 to 30,000 baht a month, then we can give only 1.5 times maximum. If income between 30 to 50,000 baht a month, then three times maximum. But if income higher than 50,000 baht a month, we can go up to five times, and five times is the maximum limit that we can give. For personal loan, there are no minimum income, but the interest rate and fee we can charge maximum at 28%. For credit line, again, it depends on the income of customer. If income less than 30,000 baht a month, we can give only 1.5 times, and they cannot, um, we cannot give the loan if they already have three loans. We have the National Credit Bureau in Thailand, and we can check all financial information in the Credit Bureau. So we know that how many loans that they have. Then if income more than 30,000 baht a month, five times maximum that we can give. KTC also enter into another two business, Nano Finance and Pico Finance. These two business is smaller than the personal loan. For the nano finance, is the business related. It means customer have to do some business, but when we're talking about business, we're not talking about SME. It's a very, very small business, like a mom and pop store, or you sell something um, on the internet, things like that. The interest rate and fee that we can charge, maximum at 36%. For Pico Finance, this fund is provincial license. It means, for example, we apply for Bangkok license, then we can give the loan to people in the Bangkok area only. The interest rate we can charge for the first 50,000 baht if we give the loan is 36%. If the loan more than 50,000 baht, the higher of 50,000 baht is 28% we can charge. But maximum we can go is 100,000 baht. This one for individuals, you're talking about uh, people that have the less income. Some of them might be in the uh, black market. So these two business, we already set up a company, Nano Company and Pico Company. These two company, KTC holding 75% and KTB holding 25%. 
So it's a joint venture. We are now uh, on the process of applying license for nano finance and pico finance. We expect to get the license by um, this month and should start our business by the beginning of the third quarter. Now we go to credit card business, um, the majority portfolio of us. This one talking about the penetration rate. The private consumption expenditure in Thailand is about like eight trillion per year. For the first quarter, it's about like nearly two trillion. Out of that, 22% using credit card in terms of settlement to buy things. So 22% seem small compared to some country like um, Hong Kong, Singapore is more than 40%, or in the Europe and the US is more than 60%. Out of that 22%, it means there are more opportunity for us in order to people changing behavior from cash to cards. So that's the opportunity for, for us. In our business, we have the market share on number of cards, about 10.5%. We have 2.3 million cards. KTB is also one of the distribution channel for us. It generates about like 40% of the new application coming in. Another key channel is direct sale and telesale. For the credit card spending, we have the market share of 11.2%, higher than the market share on the number of cards. For the first quarter, we grow the spending on the credit cards about 10.4% a little bit higher than the industry average of the 8.6%. And look into the portfolio quality, you can see that we have the market share on portfolio of 12.5%, and the NPR is only 1.04 compared to the industry average of 2%. On the, credit, uh, on the personal loan, it's about the same thing on distribution channel, but majority is the bringing in the new application is direct sale and telesale. We have the market share of 7% on the personal loan and we control on the portfolio quality. You see that the NPL is even less than 1% compared to the industry of about like 3.5%. Um, for the graph on the growth, you can see that uh, on the first quarter it's kind of like spike in terms of the growth of 39% because BOT included the car title deed loan into the personal loan portfolio, but um, they do it on the first quarter and not retroactive, so the, the numbers seem to be jumping. For the funding, we have the asset of 76 billion. Out of that, the borrowing portfolio is 50 billion. On the 50 billion, um, about 95% is the long-term loan, that we, uh, long-term bond that we have. We issue a lot of bonds um, in the duration two years to 10 years. Average duration is about four years on the mixing between short-term and long-term. Average cost of fund is 2.9%. The covenants on all the bonds that we issue is DE ratio, not more than 10 times. Currently is 3.25, so um, we can increase the portfolio without having to tap to the new equity. We have the rating of A plus by Trace and KTB also give the credit line of 18 billion. We use this for some of the short term, like short term management. And all the bonds that we issue is Thai baht only fixed rate. So that's why we try to stabilize the cost of fund. It should be along this 2.33% um, for a couple of years. This one talking about the PNL, uh, which you can download the full financial statement from our website. And we have the MDNA that explain a lot of um, items in the financial statement. We also issue MDNA every quarter. You can download from our website as well. Uh, I want to point out the bad debt recovery that's um, increasing every year. And for this one, it's a key financial ratio. You can see that the uh, cost to income ratio dropped to the 33%. The average cost of fund is 2.9. Average interest received is about 18.3. And NIM is about 15.4. If you look into the financial statement alone, you're not gonna get the same number as showing here because we are non-bank. So 
interest income that we book on the financial statement is only 15%. So the rest is go into credit uses and it go under the fee income. In the MDNA, we explain how much is the interest and how much is the fee. And then you're gonna come in with the same number showing here. The ROE is 37%. The um, NPL coverage is about six times. Allowance um, compared to the total receivable is 7.1%. We pay dividend of 40% at least of the net profit. And the last slide is on the guideline we give out for the year 2019. We target the portfolio growth of 10%. The portfolio quality, which is our one priority, we want to maintain at 1.1%. The credit card spending, we target 15%, and the target growth of 10%. So that kind of like the wrap up of the performance on the first quarter. So now we can go to the question and answer. Hello, uh, Chitty Devs here, CFO. Uh, we have a bit of a question here. Uh, the first one's Please comment on the potential competitor of both credit card and personal loan. Um, actually, on, on the credit card side, we we all, all of the competitors mostly banks, uh, Thai banks and foreign banks. Uh, foreign banks used to be a number of them, but lately, uh, as uh, HSBC already so their portfolio and we saw also uh, send chart also so their portfolio and CIMB already left the market so on, on the foreign front we left only cities still in in the market and the rest of them are Thai banks and also uh, mostly of these competitors we are competing in 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 the promotions to to the customer branding and, and all those mostly marketing. There is no price competition in this market. Everybody is charging at 18%. And if there is a potential newcomer into the market, uh, that would be quite difficult. Uh, see for all those foreign banks has left the market and all the, the big bank here are controlling uh, most of the market and in the credit card business, uh, you need to have at least a million cards to have a critical mass for, for, for the card companies to grow. So it, it would be quite difficult to, to have a newcomer into the, the market. On the personal loan, we have not only banks, but we also have the non-banks, like uh, uh, some uh, friends from a Japanese firm. Uh, we also have a subsidiary, so uh, some banks doing the personal loan as well. So. On the personal loan side, uh, the, the, the market, even probably the market is probably larger because they, are not, they do not have the, the uh, limit on, on uh, the income. So mostly everybody who passed the criteria could have the personal loan. So there is quite a number of competitors in the market. But however, banks tend to cover most of the higher end uh, uh, customers because uh, mostly banks are quite conservative in, in terms of uh, their approval criteria. So on, on, the, on the mass market, uh, mostly the non-bank would cover that. So that, that's probably uh, about the personal loan and the credit card market. Uh, second question would be, how much do you expect on nano personal loan and PICO? Uh, personal loan is easy one. Uh, the personal loan we have the target about 10% growth in 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 the portfolio for this year. But Pico and Nano, uh, I, I think uh, it it would be quite difficult to say at the moment uh, what would be the expectation. Uh, one thing that we would like to say is that uh, we expect that we can be successful in this market. But however, since uh, there's never been anyone who have a success in Pico and Nano before, and also we have not yet get the license. So 
uh, doing even a pilot test still illegal for now. Uh, so I think at, at the moment what we would like to, to do is uh, wait until we get the license and we can do the pilot and we test the market. Uh, then we would have a better feeling and uh, better assessment of the market and we can uh, actually say at the later stage how much we can, how much we can expect uh, in those Pico and Nano. So please give us a, a quarter or two quarters to, to, to see how, how it goes after we have the first launch of the first pilot test. Okay, um, third question, I think the third question and the, the first same, question the is the same question. So uh, on the fourth one, a uh, bit basic, uh, are there any large bill outstanding which could satisfy, substantially affect the performance of the company? Uh, actually, no. There is actually no bills outstanding. Um, I don't think we, we have any anything outstanding that that would uh, be substantially affect the performance of the companies. Uh, there would be some of the lawsuit case in which we are waiting for the Supreme Court to have the verdict, but uh, that's on the other end that we should get the money because uh, we are expected to win and, and we already win for for the first and the second court. Um, what is your liquidity uh, position? I think if you look at uh, the presentation uh, from there, uh, we'll see that uh, our liquidity uh, position is quite good. Uh, normally, in, we raise funds from the market and we are using a debenture. Uh, more than 70% of our borrowing are over three months, are over three years, sorry. And uh, not only that, we also have 18 billion baht of the credit line from KTB. So uh, I think the liquidity position is probably one of a good one in, in, in Thailand. Uh, what's the three year business plan? Actually, the revenue growth. Um, talking about core business, uh, credit card and loan. For the time being, uh, with the, our, our uh, records, uh, I think the organic growth of around 10% each year would would be, would be uh, sustainable. So uh, normally what we give out guideline to, to our investor that would be, uh, we probably like to, to uh, maintain the ROE above 25%. Even though you see the past two, uh, last year and this year we have a ROE above 30%, but, but it, 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 that is very good, but it's too good probably. Uh, and uh, we probably cannot sustain that in, in a longer term. But uh, talking about a, a sustainable level of the ROE uh, above 25%, that is, probably, that is quite a good one. Uh, Long-term ROE target, that's already been covered. For both credit cards and personal loan, most of your clients are in Bangkok or countryside. Is there any potential competitor? Uh, on the competitor, I already answered that. Uh, the personal, the credit card clients, uh, it's about half-half for people using the card in Bangkok and outside uh, Bangkok. Uh, for, for the personal loan, mostly uh, are in Bangkok, around 70% uh, yeah. are in Bangkok and the 30% are outside of the uh, Bangkok. Uh, yeah, that's about it for, for all these questions. So we cover all the questions. Thank you again to um, join our session and see you again for the second quarter results. Thank you. Thank you.